Welcome to The Process, a place where artists can discuss ideas, creativity, the industry, and of course the music that drives us. We are the Beamish Brothers. My name is Ben. And I'm Jeremy, and we're an Australian duo. We write songs, play shows, and always love a good chat with the talented people we come across on our journey. Hey guys, quick note, this podcast was recorded in December 2019, so the dates and times mentioned will obviously be different. Thanks so much for listening, enjoy. Hello and welcome to the podcast. Today's guest is Rosendale from San Francisco. He's an artist and vocalist with over 100,000 subscribers on his YouTube channel, which features some phenomenal covers. He's also a songwriter with millions of streams to his name on Spotify. Rosendale, thank you so much for joining us. How are you doing, man? I'm good. Thank you so much for having me. Our pleasure. It's so good to have you on the show. Um, So where are you coming to us from? Where are you right now? So right now I am in South San Francisco. This is where I was basically born and raised. Amazing. Awesome. Well, about San Francisco. So as Australians, we do kind of romanticize the, the American cities. Can you tell us a little bit about San Francisco and maybe what the music scene is like there and whether it like inspires your music? Yeah, San Francisco is kind of its own little microclimate. It's the weather here is always either very cold or very temperate. It doesn't snow, but it's always kind of like a sweater weather type temperature. (laughs) And yeah, the music scene here, I would say, is kind of up and coming. It's definitely not as big and bustling as maybe in New York City or in L.A., but I think because it is up and coming. There are people that you can meet to make music with, make music videos and stuff like that with. So most of the people that I know in, that are making music are here in San Francisco. That's yeah. awesome. That's awesome. Fantastic. And I, I mean, we, we have like a, a similar climate, I think, here in Toowoomba. It's very like, you know, up and up and down, I think. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, you know. <laughs> um, right now, though, it's... um. A uh, solid, ridiculously like, hot. 35 degrees Celsius, not Fahrenheit. Um, oh, so wow. It's, it's pretty That's hot. hot. Um, yeah, so it, we're just pretty insane. Praising the aircon gods. Absolutely. <laughs> so, um, for listeners and fans who might not know you yet, we just want to know how would you describe your music so that the people who are listening know who Rosendale is um, and what kind of style you do, what you're all about? My music is mostly in the pop and electronic genre, I would say. And a lot of the songs that I write are kind of very moody. They're a little bit, I would say, kind of on like the, yeah, the moodier side. I like to write a lot of sad songs. (laughs) I wouldn't consider myself to be a very sad person, but I do like to write songs that get people to feel a certain emotion or to think about a certain topic. And yeah, I think it's it's fun to write pop songs that have more more of a meaning to them. I would say <laughs> totally. I think we we do that a lot as well. Actually, you know, we uh, we tend to uh, similar thing. What we bounce back and forth between quite jovial and then sometimes sassy, and then other times it's like quite moody and and serious undertones. So mm-hmm. you know, it's I think it's really uh, interesting as a songwriter to kind of express all those themes and um definitely that is one of the things that um we did love about your music as well actually um that kind oh, of thank you no worries and while we're talking about that we do have to mention your latest single uh with cryjax i hope i pronounced that right um and um yeah obviously that one's that one's fantastic how did you actually what was the creative process like behind that one That song I wrote, I think about maybe a year or two years ago. Actually, a lot of the songs that I write kind of sit on the back burner for a little bit, and I pitch them to various producers to see who might be interested in working on collaborations with me. The song, basically, a lot of the songs that I write start in my bedroom, and sometimes when you're holed up in your apartment just in your bedroom, you get a lot of these like thoughts and you might be feeling sad depending on maybe the weather or things that you're going through. And that song was based on the emotions that I was feeling at the time. And I basically just picked it, pitched it to Cryjax and asked them if they wanted to work on a collaboration. And they ended up coming up with this awesome future, kind of like a mix of future bass and trap production style to it. And yeah, I really like the way the song turned out. So 
Yeah, yeah, absolutely. yeah, absolutely love it. I kind of agree with what you were saying before too. Like sometimes it's like the happiest people that write the saddest music in some ways. Like <laughs> it's like the people who you never expect to be like secretly edgy and moody just have these like <laughs> incredibly kind of moving emotional songs. And I feel like you're really good at that. Like you, you have a, a really, like when I see your videos on YouTube, you have a super mm. positive energy, but um, also your music is kind of emotional. I think it's really awesome. Absolutely. Oh, and so you. when you're, when you're <laughs> um, kind of writing songs, um, well, particularly with, I guess, Cryjax, um, obviously you, you do a lot of collaborations with um, different producers and that kind of thing. Do you have like a, a favorite when it comes to a favorite process when it comes to writing like do you prefer to collaborate with other artists or do you prefer to kind of work on your own and then uh you know just kind of dabble in the in the collaborative side of things i would say i like to do both when i first started writing music i would reach out to producers to see if they had a track that they had already produced that they needed vocals on and i think it's a lot easier to start a song when you're basing what your work off of somebody else's work. So when a producer has a track done already, their music will kind of inspire images in your own mind and kind of take you in a direction with the song. I think over the years, I started basically just noodling around on my keyboard and coming up with melodies or lyrics, singing in the shower, sitting on the toilet, whatever it might be. <laughs> and yeah, I think both ways. I don't, I don't really know if I have a preference for either. 100%. Well, either way, it seemed to work out really well for you. I mean, Willow Tree, your most streamed song at the moment on Spotify, it, it's awesome, it's super dreamy and has a really interesting production quality. Could you tell listeners a little bit about that, um, what the writing process was like behind it and, you know, uh, what it's about? Yeah, the song is basically about not being able to be with the person that you love. And actually at that time I had just gotten into a relationship. So it wasn't really based on anything that was going on in my life. And I think I actually wrote those vocals as a collaboration with a different artist, but that project never got, never went anywhere. Sometimes, you know, projects like they fall through or, you know, the artist doesn't want to release a song any, anymore, whatever it may be. So the lyric was kind of sitting on the back burner and I ended up pitching the vocal to Rival and Cadmium. I had never met them before. They just randomly popped up on my other artists that people who listen to your music also listen to in that section of my Spotify profile. So I just sent them a message. I listened to their music and I really liked it, their production style. And yeah, they just basically came up with this awesome production and we signed it to NCS and I was like, yay, <laughs> my first <laughs> NCS release. <laughs> oh, absolutely. I mean, in terms of, you know, when you're releasing uh, an electronic song or really just any song, I mean, NCS is one of the go-tos in, in terms of, you know, goals for releases. Hey, hey everyone, this is Ben and Jeremy here from The Editing Room. And we just wanted to jump in right now to say that we hope you're all doing okay. We know it's obviously a bit of a difficult time right now for live music and all industries really, just with the current coronavirus crisis. But we just wanted to wish you well, hope you're all staying inside, staying healthy. And if anyone needs to talk to us at any stage, then feel free to drop us a message. We're always here and think it's more important now than ever to support live music and artists during this difficult time. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we are going to be inside a lot, uh, writing, doing all kinds of music things, but also just you know, doing as many podcasts as we can. Hopefully we can actually um, increase our output and get more to you. Thank you so much for listening to our podcast last week with JT Roach. Appreciate it. It was really awesome to see you guys listening. And um, yeah, if you haven't already, make sure you give us a review. Go follow us. We don't really know the podcast lingo, but yeah, do all that fun stuff. And enjoy the rest of the podcast. Um, actually, it's funny, you know, you mentioned Rival and Cadmium. When 
because obviously, you know, Jeremy actually came across uh, your YouTube videos prior and we were kind of like, wow, this is insane. And then, you know, I obviously know you from Facebook. We're in the same kind of community and, you know, did some obviously searching on Spotify, did some sneaky stalker stuff and uh, saw that, that the top song was with Rival and Cadmium, who I also know actually and I'm friends with on Facebook. And that was kind of like, a, oh, wow, this this music scene is so ridiculously small. And so it's really <laughs> interesting to, to hear how that, you know, for me, how that process kind of came about. That's super interesting. And obviously it's done really well. It's on two million streams coming up to three million now. Congratulations, by the way. Thank you, thank you, thank you. No worries. I was actually um, kind of interested to know, like, whether you um, have any preference in terms of like collaborating or um, working by yourself. Like, is there something really special about you know, do, like, just working on a song with no other creative input, or like, do you just like really thrive off getting to share your top lines and melodies with producers and putting it together? I. Uh... I like to do both and I would say I have like a different approach when it comes to just solely original music with where I'm not really working with anybody else. With collaborations, I feel like I, when you're working with somebody, you have to kind of not necessarily conform, but work with their style. So sometimes, you know, maybe this song might not end up the exact way that you wanted it to. And with original music, like purely original music, I get to basically make the song however I want it to be. So I usually spend a lot of time and effort and market the song. I'll make like a music video. I usually, when I'm writing songs, I have like pictures of the music video already in mind. So I kind of go like the full out music production, marketing process, music video process for purely original stuff. And when it comes to collaborations, I really just like to work with people and kind of work off of their ideas and just make like the best song possible. Yeah, so. of course. Like, yeah, Ben and I have done like a fair bit of collaborating and it's like such a different experience to working on it by ourselves. Like we personally, like totally. we, we love it, but also do like struggle with that whole, like letting go of our little songwriting babies and just kind of going like, <laughs> Oh, like, Ooh, that's not a creative decision I would have necessarily gone for, but like, right. that's okay. Like we can go with it. We can work with it. Like, well, know. I do love that about collaborating as well, because you know, you start with an idea and then what's so fascinating about working with other people is you do just get inputs and ideas which would never have occurred to you before yeah. and that's you know that's always kind of both uh, exhilarating and ridiculously terrifying at the same time when exactly. you're dealing with kind of your own original content but that is part of the joy I think and the spontaneity within the you know collaborative process so I mean it's it's really, um, it's always interesting to hear, you know, how other artists uh, kind of respond to that and, and where they're at with that. It's, it's super exciting for us. But um, I, I was wondering as well, with Willow Tree, which is obviously, you know, your top song, it, what's interesting about the way Spotify works is how, you know, when a song gets a lot of traction, then it obviously goes to the top of your page. And in this case, it was like, it's been out for, what, a year or something like that? It's been been out for quite a while so do you ever look back on songs like top songs or things like that after they've been released and kind of does your perspective on them change or do you listen to all of your old music and just go yeah I'm so happy with that or do you kind of ever look back because I know in our case we kind of look back on old releases and we go oh it's interesting like our yeah. style and our writing skills have kind of evolved but yeah especially just... like because um even once the the songs are out like often you've kind of sat with them for you know months mm. working on them maybe even like a year you've had these songs in mind so like mm. it's funny when like you look at the top of your discography and kind of go like oh wow that's a song that i you know might not even connect with anymore mm. but like i'm just interested to know your perspective on that yeah there's definitely many a song that i wrote way back when that i just wish weren't on my Spotify page anymore. <laughs> yeah, I I think for the most part, when I go back and listen to them, I am mostly proud that I was able to release them. I try not to let like the stream count or anything anything like that impact the way that I view the song. A lot of the times I'll go back and I'll, I'll listen to some of the songs. I'll be like, wow, I really like the way this 
certain, <laughs> wow, I really like this certain lyric that I wrote, turn out. No, I, yeah, I'll go back and listen to some of my music and I'll just be remembered about certain parts that I might have forgotten in, you know, maybe like the mixing of a certain song or like maybe focusing more on a certain lyric or making a certain vocal melody stronger. So it really is just kind of like a reminder for me to to really hone in on certain parts of current songs that I'm, I'm making. Yeah, totally. Yeah, exactly. And out of all the songs that you've released, do you have a favorite so far? And if so, why that one? Ooh, do I have a favorite? That's a good question. <laughs> I would say my current favorite is probably Tell Me How to Let Go, which is a purely original. Well, I, I shouldn't say purely original, but I hired a an amazing producer duo, duo called Rogue Nathan, hopefully I'm pronouncing their artist name correctly, to do the production for that song. And I really just, I really loved how they produced it. I really was proud of the lyric that I wrote. It's basically a song about abuse and how abuse can really transmit from generation to generation, whether, um, you know, it's like a parent or a grandparent, you know, whatever type of abuse it might be, hopefully not, you know, anything physical or sexual or anything like that. But abuse really, abusive behavior really does transmit through generations. And I wanted to write a song that would get people to think more about that topic and be more mindful about the actions that we do and what impacts they might have on our friends, our family, whoever may, it may be. So yeah, I, I, that's probably my proudest song right now. That's <laughs> awesome. I love it when people bring interesting subjects into pop music. So like, I don't know when people start to talk about things that aren't um, mm. the more commonly talked about themes, such as like love and breakups and things like that. Um, mm. For Ben and me, like our proudest songs are always the ones where we're kind of like, you know, it might not have been the most streamed song, but we kind of look at it and go, yeah, but who writes songs about that? Like, that's mm. cool. <laughs> and I feel like that's, or for songwriters, it's so um, thrilling to look back on our work and kind of go like, oh, wow, this song might have actually, mm. you know, made a difference to somebody. This might have, like, helped them deal with the problem, especially something as serious as, like, abuse. So Absolutely. I feel like that's awesome. Right, exactly. No, totally. Yeah. And, no, I, I, I mean, Jeremy's right. I mean, it is, uh, that's the great thing I think about songwriting I mean it as when something comes you know from either a personal place or even when there's just kind of a social mesh uh, social oh my goodness it is drink early. that coffee man. drink that coffee <laughs> uh, when there's like a social message attached to a song as well it you know for us anyway it carries um, a whole lot of weight and that's always you know really really awesome um, so we're at the end of the year now just wondering what stage are you at now as an artist? Are you, are things getting really busy or are you starting to go into relax mode? <laughs> yeah, I think especially with this time of the year with the holidays coming up, I'm really wanting to start to relax and just basically check out of life. <laughs> but yeah, a lot of things are going on. Usually at this time of the year, I make a bit, I coordinate a big video project on my YouTube channel, which is a mashup of an acapella mashup of multiple different songs that were released during the year, kind of as a music recap of the year. And I am currently working on an, a little EP. I just went through a breakup. So I'm using that, emo, it, th that experience in my life right now to inspire all of these things that I want to write about with respect to the emotions that I'm going through. So that's that's my main focus right now, and I'm hoping to release it sometime next year. We'll oh, see. amazing! <laughs> so we can expect an emotionally charged <laughs> single to come out next year. We cannot wait. And yes, no, that's awesome. And you mentioned your your acapella videos and your YouTube um, videos and and the work that goes into that. I mean, obviously, we had a look at them and were just blown away. Like it, it is insane. I'm wondering how much time actually goes into preparing those either covers or those mashup videos that you do, those acapella videos, because obviously the production quality alone is just mind boggling, but then also the arrangements as well yeah. are pretty intense. So, so what's the preparation time and the process behind that like? Yeah, for some videos, maybe if I'm doing like an acoustic cover, it might take me maybe a day or two to, you know, record vocals, play the piano, mix a song, film the video. For things like the acapella mashups that I do, they I basically started the project, I would say, about a month ago, and I work on it for at least maybe 
two to three hours, maybe not every day, but every other day. So it's a, it does take a lot of time to <laughs> make everything come together for those types of videos. But at the end, I'm always just very, hopefully very happy with how it turns out. So yes, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> the dedication is so intense. Like that's something to be really proud of. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you guys. I'm sure you guys know also. Oh, a hundred percent. I mean, look, our, <laughs> our videos are not quite at the same level as, as yours yet, but we do try yeah. and we have a lot of fun in the process mm -hmm. and on YouTube, that obviously that is your biggest platform. Like you've got over, uh, we mentioned a hundred thousand followers, uh, subscribers on that platform. How did that kind of thing come about? Cause I'm always curious. We're always curious as artists, like whether that was something that just kind of exploded all at once, or if that is that something that was like a gradual thing that happened? Like, what was it like kind of getting that kind of platform and what is it like now? I, started making YouTube videos about seven years ago. So it's mm. been kind of a long, long journey for me. Yeah. <laughs> I know for some people, you know, they make one video and they hit a, a million explode. subscribers in like a month or something like that. We, it, we it wasn't the case yeah. for me. It no, was we hate those kind of like a, <laughs> <laughs> a long, I would say a long, but it, I, I spent a lot of time on that platform. Mm. And I think it's really, for me, I've just been focused on consistency and posting videos on a regular basis, just letting the people who are, you know, I'm, that I'm so grateful for following me, mm. letting them know that I really appreciate their support and that I won't give up on this musical passion that I have. That's yeah, awesome. That's so cool. Well, we're kind of coming to the end of the podcast. So we just wanted to do a little quick fire round of questions so the listeners can kind of get a little bit of a sense of who you are, what you like, those sort of things. And uh, the way it works is we're basically going to ask you a few questions and you can try and, if you're up for it, you can try and respond as quickly as you can. Don't overthink them and hopefully we'll have a lot of fun in the process. So are you ready? Yes. Okay, Excited. here we go. All right, morning or night person? Night. Oh, 100% <laughs> yes. Jeremy... Disagree. Out of the room right now. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> <laughs> Rosendale and I unite. All on right, this all right. Next question. All right, favorite city, New York or LA? Ooh. Controversy. LA. Okay. Ooh, Interesting. I see. Yeah. Interesting, okay. and why? New York is just too crazy for me. Like, it's a bit, <laughs> there's, it's a bit there's so many people. The space is so compacted. Mm. Yeah, I think with LA, at least you can. I mean, you might be stuck in traffic for an hour, but at <laughs> least you can drive places without feeling like you're stuck in a in a tiny little space. <laughs> that's that's fair. I mean, we were in New York. Well, we were in New York and LA in 2017, and one of the things that was uh, it's interesting because. They're such different dynamics to both cities. And with New York, it was definitely, you do get that sense of being, I guess, it, it's so intense. Yeah. Next totally so next question, an artist you would love to collaborate with? Imogen Heap. <laughs> She's oh one of my gosh. favorite, favorite artists of all time. She's basically like a jack of all trades, producer, singer, songwriter, mixing and mastering engineer. She does everything. And yeah, she's one of my biggest inspirations. Like I, I think I started writing and making my own music because of her. That's so cool. She's amazing. My partner literally has a tattoo of like um, hide and seek on his arms. So. Yes, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That song like basically was my entire high school life. <laughs> yes, and she just did the soundtrack for um, the Harry Potter and the Cursed Child play, which is so cool. Like if you haven't heard that, Go listen to it. It's like an hour and a half of just like instrumental music. Perfect to listen to while you're driving. Yes, oh, yes, yes. Okay, next question. This is a bit of a different one. Biggest shock about the music industry and something that made you go, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> um, how terrible some record labels can be. <laughs> mm, yes. Yeah, I... I have gotten into, well, luckily I haven't gotten into any litigation stages with any record labels, That's but cool. it sometimes is really difficult to get paid by your record label. Yeah. And yeah, it was really shocking to me how sometimes, I mean, in general, how difficult it is to get paid as a musician. Yeah. So it, yeah, it, I hope it gets, I hope the industry revolutionizes <laughs> and starts treating artists better. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, you're absolutely right. It, it is, it's not 
an easy field of work to kind of make a full-time living in and it doesn't exactly help when you know you've got uh, labels and other organizations that kind of delay that that process and that kind of thing so I get that we've that had ex- we've had really positive experience and negative experiences working with labels um, and I think it is very like totally st- circumstantial sometimes you work with a label and you're like oh this is gonna be insane and then a year later you're like it'd be nice to get some money for that song yeah. <laughs> like, with, but um, exactly. in, in any case yes okay on. so last question advice for aspiring artists who would like to follow in your footsteps don't give up <laughs> yes <laughs> i think that. yeah really it's for me it's been about consistency and just pushing forward regardless of how down you might feel about yourself about your music or whatever it may be just really really putting in that hard work that dedication and i think good things will come amazing i love that We're going to end that uh, with that note of positivity. Thank you so much, Rosendale, for joining the podcast. Listeners, you can check him out on his socials. Make sure you follow him on Instagram. Check him out on Facebook. Stream all of his music and buy it, please, as well. And thank you again so much for taking the time. Thank you. 